Here's my latest book review for New in Chess, and this time I'm looking at Game Changer by Matthew Sadler and Natasha Regan, available from newinchess.com for $24.95 US dollars and $19.95 British pounds. This is the story of Alpha Zero. So the strap line is Alpha Zero's groundbreaking chess strategies and the promise of artificial intelligence. This is already for me a strong candidate for book of the year. I absolutely love it. A uh, quick word about the authors. Matthew Sadler, one of England's strongest grandmasters, at his best he was approaching the world's top 10. And Natasha Regan is a women's international master who is also a mathematician. So Matthew very naturally dealt with uh, the chess side of the story and Natasha was uh, more concerned with the scientific aspects of the Alpha Zero story. The authors had exclusive access to Alpha Zero and the DeepMind team who talked them through how the uh, technology of Alpha Zero was developed and artificial intelligence as well. Um, it's just a fascinating read. Um, before we go any further, let me show you this position. Alpha Zero has just played the rook here, attacking that knight. And here, Stockfish very meekly went into an end game. But after the exchange of queens and rook takes knight, well, with the two bishops, it didn't take uh, Alpha Zero very long to win this position. So the question is, why did Stockfish play like that? Why didn't it retreat the knight to b5? What had Alpha Zero foreseen in this position? So while you're having a think about that, I'll continue with the story. Um, so who who is this book aimed at? Um, who should read this book? Well, as the authors say in their preface, keen chess players looking to learn new strategies, artificial intelligence enthusiasts, and chess enthusiasts. So basically, um, if you know how the pieces move and you've got a pulse, then this book is for you. But uh, really, I think... There, there's so much in this book that I think the authors are right. It appeals to uh, a whole range of people. It, it, it's very broad in its scope. Um, the authors very helpfully uh, tell you how to read this book in their preface as well. They say, the chess content of this book is arranged in discrete chapters and designed to be read out of sequence. Well, that's my kind of book because I like dipping in and out. So chapters are, uh, you know, according to theme. This is not some kind of data dump where they take 200 games and just, you know, print them out. Um, so we have chapters such as how Alpha Zero thinks, Alpha Zero style, peace mobility, attacking the king, opening repertoire. And I have to say that the authors have such a command of their subject, that they're able to explain with great clarity the whole story and the strategies and, and so on. Um, they really are very gifted in that respect. You know, this is not some kind of scientific book which suddenly it's going over your head. You know, I'm clueless about technology and I was able to understand uh, what they were going on about. Um, I wrote down Four words which for me sum this book up. Um, provocative, inspirational, instructive, and joyful. You know, the authors convey how much they enjoyed exploring this whole subject and, and um, looking at chess positions with Alpha Zero. And that's great to see. But also Alpha Zero's style as many of you will have seen already, it's great fun. You know, it's always fun to see uh, someone or something 
with a really iconoclastic style. So some of the things that Alpha Zero is doing are just incredible. Um, let me give you the solution to, to this position for a start. Here, the, I should say this didn't happen in the game, but Bishop F3 is a winning move. Well, the idea is that after pawn takes, then rook a6 swings across, and then there's no decent defense here. You can give the queen up with queen g2, but it, it's hopeless. Um, and after bishop f3, if rook e1, there are some beautiful variations here. So rook a6, the rook swings across. King defends the pawn here. And now, this is almost a kind of slow motion attack. It's beautiful. And now, the key move, rook g5, threatening queen h3 and rook h5 mate. And after rook e5, f5 just shuts that out completely. If we go way back here, then if rook a6 straight away without bishop f3, then queen d1 is actually a saving move. Threatening a queen exchange, well, or offering a queen exchange, I should say. And after the queen goes back, queen g4 chases the queen away. Um, this move, bishop f3, rather reminds me well, it reminds me of several games, actually, but there's one in particular that um, I absolutely love, where Tony Miles played this, um, I think, against Dizdar, um, and, and won very quickly with a kingside attack. A similar kind of idea to prevent white's pieces from defending. Um, it's a fantastic idea. Uh, but in this book... Yes, there are some beautiful attacking games by Alpha Zero, but there is so much more. There are also some beautiful strategic games as well. Um, this one really impressed me. Well, this looks like a very tedious position. It's one of those um, lines from the Berlin with a symmetrical pawn structure. Um, I mean, it's very hard to imagine that Alpha Zero against uh, Stockfish, a very, very strong uh, machine, uh, that Alpha Zero managed to, to actually win this position. But it's so instructive how it managed to do that. Um, it played h5. Well, nothing special so far. And then it played b5. And now, those two moves in themselves look somehow quite loose, quite anti-positional, actually. And yet, um, somehow Alpha Zero, well, it's typical of its very aggressive style. But I think one of the things I took from this game and many others from Alpha Zero is that you have to give something to get something. So it makes um, quite daring decisions. But in the end, well, they often pay off. So here, it seems as though white is doing absolutely fine. Um, you know, playing b5 is uh, seems a little bit odd to give the knight this square. And then it takes... Alpha zero takes on a4. Um, so now, it, yeah, it looks very strange with these two pawns, which are potentially vulnerable. And then it plays f6. Uh, potentially, you know, well, it's weakening this square. But the whole point is that it's connected with this strategy of advancing the h-pawn. And it's actually very difficult for white to exploit these weaknesses without allowing some kind of counter-attack. Well, I mean, there are 
there are so many subtleties to this game. Uh, it is absolutely brilliant. I should say that Alpha Zero only won in 142 moves, um, but it's beautifully explained. Um, there are lots of opening ideas which are fun to look at, actually. Uh, this one struck me um, and, and says much about Alpha Zero's style. So this was one of the, the TSEC positions, the, the computer chess engine championship positions that were given to the machines to play. Alpha Zero is black here. And this is a standard position from, from the Piets, the Austrian attack, where the normal moves are either uh, knight c7 or bishop g4. It's a very well-known theoretical position. But at this point, already Alpha Zero is extremely unimpressed by Black's position and gives an expected score from here of 31.2%, so pretty low. And, well, clearly it it feels that this is a desperate situation already and requires desperate measures. And it played here c4, giving away a pawn. Now this doesn't actually give away a second pawn because it gets this one back, but basically Alpha Zero is now a clear pawn down, but at least it's managed to unbalance the position. Uh, and incredibly, in spite of, well, yeah, having a clear pawn down, it actually managed to draw this game finally. Um, but I think, you know, that's a lesson in itself that um, activity is incredibly important. Well, I could go on. Um, I've had such fun already uh, dipping into this book um, and there's so much to it. Oh, I should say one other thing that um, the authors often make a comparison with with uh, old games by well going back to for example uh, Joseph Blackburn great English attacking player from the Victorian times and you know coming right up to date Carlson and Kasparov and uh, earlier um, Botvinnik and so on but so that they have chess culture and I like that you know they draw comparisons with, with some classics of the past too. This is just a great book. I can't uh, speak uh, more highly of it. It's it's great. There's also a, a forward by Gary Kasparov and an introduction by the chief exec of DeepMind, Demis Asabis as well, who puts everything in context. So listen, I think I should stop talking now. Game Changer by Matthew Sadler and Natasha Regan. Available from newinchess.com. I've often thought about what would the perfect player look like. It might play the game in a completely different way from the way that we play it. As a chess player, you want to know more about chess, you want to get deeper, and there is so much still to learn. Alpha Zero played a match against Stockfish, which was the strongest computer that we all knew, and it won the match. And all of a sudden I thought, wow, you know. Does this really work? How does it know how to do it? I started thinking, oh, it's quite interesting, quite interesting. And there's just a couple of games that went bang. And these were very exciting games, very attacking games, giving pawns away right at the early stages of the game. The other computers were thinking, well, that's too early. Alpha Zero doesn't have any rules. It learns through experience. Really didn't think there was room for this huge attacking style. Yeah. You know, it's never in my wildest yeah. dreams. There's even more depth than we thought in chess. It's like discovering the secret notebooks of some great player from the past. It explains Alpha Zero's strategies. How does Alpha Zero think? Alpha Zero blows apart what traditional engines are doing.